Throughout my career, guys, I've had to fight two fighters from Thailand, very, very high level Muay Thai practitioners, plus a whole bunch of other practitioners throughout the whole world who base their style on the martial art of Muay Thai. Now, because of that, I have so many times had to prepare for that style and come up with what I think are the best tips to defeat it. So today, guys, I have seven tips if you need to defeat a Muay Thai stylist. All right, guys, I've talked about this on my channel already. How do you defeat the Muay Thai style? Keep in mind, I have nothing against Muay Thai. I love the Muay Thai style. It's just that I have a great style to defeat the athletes who choose to fight like this. It's just something that I've trained for my whole career. And I like to share with everybody else out there because so often the Muay Thai fighters end up coming over to the kickboxing. So keep in mind, I'm not talking about defeating a Muay Thai fighter under their rules. Although some of the tips I'm gonna give you will definitely help if that was the case. But I'm talking about how to defeat a Muay Thai fighter when they come over to kickboxing rule set. And as we've seen time and time again, happens in 1FC, happened in K1, happened in glory numerous times. The Thai fighters come over, they do a fantastic job adapting, but it's never perfect. It's never flawless trying to go from clenching and elbows to the kickboxing style. So you have to have those little ideas in your brain, in your training camp on how you're going to defeat this guy and take advantage of them trying out a new style. I mean, punch is a punch, kick is a kick, and knee is a knee. But when you start taking away elements from somebody, it becomes that much more difficult. Kind of like if a kickboxer went into a boxing fight, when you start removing tools from somebody that they're used to throwing, it becomes a little difficult for them and you have to exploit it. But lots of love for Muay Thai. I have nothing against the style. I love it so much. So many of my favorite fighters are from Thailand, are Muay Thai fighters. Guys, before we go any further, if you think you're going to enjoy the video, you're enjoying it so far, give it a like and of course get subscribed and let's move on to point number one. Point number one is do not square off with your opponent, especially at this range right here, just out of punch range. That is the range that they want to fight at. They're going right here. They want to fire in power kicks and push you away and fall into the clinch. You do not want to square off with a Muay Thai fighter. It doesn't mean you have to be running. You don't have to be going from side to side all nervous and jerky. It just means why stand right here flat footed. Utilize some footwork, be on your feet, take angles. If they come towards you, you back up. You throw a punch combo on them. You exit right away. You go back to using your footwork and not squaring right in front of them all the time. Tip number two is to utilize your boxing combos. Because Muay Thai have a different rule set, they're not great at dealing with multiple punches. And I find usually the arms come up, they start to try to block like this, or they just seize a little bit through the arms. And there's openings that are created from that. But they're very, very used to single punches and very adept at dealing with those single punches, no problem. So you've got to move in, and once you land one, you might as well go two and three and four, and even if you can get five off, that is fantastic. You string your hands together to get that scoring underway, to get those points racked up. And as you're throwing your boxing combos, you want to be creative with it. You don't want to just attack one spot. It's not just coming forward and, oh, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of punches and hope they land. No, no, they're too good for that. They'll block those. You have to be changing up the angles, coming from every different attack point that you possibly can. Now, that's talking about one of the strengths that we have against them. Let's talk about a couple weaknesses, things you need to be prepared for. First, you definitely need to have an answer for the clench. Even if it's kickboxing rules, you're still going to get away with throwing a shot, grabbing, and getting a knee off, and maybe even a toss, depending on the rule set. You definitely don't want that happening, and it's best to have three things to deal with the clench. Number one, if you get wrapped around, your, the back of your head gets wrapped up, you take both hands and you push them right into their face. If they're very tight to you, they're right in here, hands come up to the face and you drive them back. You make it very difficult to hold that clench. If that's not working and you can't get their face, then you take both your hands, you wrap it around their back and you just lift them up and you flex to make sure they can't get a solid grip on you. They might have my neck, but as long as I have their lower back, it doesn't matter. If somebody gets control of their neck and they want to pull you down, you see how my bum scoots out? I don't just do this, they scoot here. But if your back is pulled in and you have them, it's kind of a stalemate. And then one final method of dealing with the clinch, if you get caught in a double hand, it's not my preference, but I've seen people utilize it. Two hands get wrapped around your head, you get dragged down, and you just start flying those hands out and trying to overwhelm them as they're trying to get their knees off. 
They throw a knee, you hit them three times with the hands. The downside here is it leaves you exposed to a throw, and if they happen to get a knee straight through to your jaw, then you're in big trouble. But either push the face away, control the back, and squeeze in or let those hands fly. I've had to let those hands fly in fights before. When I hadn't been to Thailand yet, I didn't know how to deal with the clench. People grabbed me and I would just throw those hands and I wouldn't stop throwing until the ref came in to break us up. And it worked, but granted, I wasn't fighting super high level guys back then. I had, I think, five fights um, and my opponent might have had about 10. So we're just talking about sort of amateur entry level kind of people. Now you need to have an answer for the low kick because the stance that we have, you know, this stance here, a Muay Thai style stance, is very good at checking kicks. But if we're a kickboxer and we're moving around, we're gonna try and utilize our footwork. It makes it very easy for somebody to land that low kick. So you either need to be very, very good at checking, but that's harder if your weight's 50-50. Hollowing out when they throw, you tuck in with those hips and you make them miss as often as possible. I've utilized this so many times in fights and it is a fantastic way to just get out of the way of the low kick and then have your counter ready. And if that one doesn't work and somebody's landing the low kick, as soon as it hits, you drop your hand outwards, you catch right on the thigh, you pin their kicking leg against your thigh and then from there you can either throw your shot or maybe sweep them out and put them down. You need to make sure that when they throw that low kick, they're going, oh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it anymore. Every time I land a low kick, they do something. It could even just be every time they low kick, you start blasting the hands back at them. I don't like that one quite as much personally because if they keep going and going and going on that leg and you're not landing solid shots with the hands, they're gonna start winning the battle. So checking, hollowing out or catching, and then once you've caught putting them on their back, all of those are gonna be fantastic ways to start dissuading them from throwing that low kick over and over. The next point, guys, is we need to have an answer for those body round kicks. Those body round kicks are high scoring things in Muay Thai. Even if they're not high scoring in kickboxing, they're gonna throw. They're gonna be throwing towards that arm over and over. And if you just stand here and take it, it's still gonna score in the kickboxing judge's mindset a little bit. And those arms, even more important, are gonna start giving out eventually. You can only take probably 20, 30 of these really powerful kicks to the arms with no shin pads before you start going, oh, okay, it's starting to hurt a little bit. So same as the low kicks, we need to make sure that once they throw this kick, they're deciding after a while, oh, it's not really worth it anymore. But we're not gonna be slipping or catching. So how do we make them pay? Well, we need to counter all the body round kicks with at least a three piece combination of the hands in my opinion. Now, when the round kick comes, we don't wanna just stand here and take it off one arm. We want the opposite arm, the kick's coming to this side, we want the opposite arm to come in cross block. I have two arms that take the kick, about 70, 80% off the lead one, and the back one only ends up taking 20 or 30%. So from there, I'm going, oh, okay, I could take now, not maybe 20 or 30 of these, but I could take 100. I could take 100 round kicks with no shin pads if I'm getting my block done correctly. Then from there, once I've blocked it, and I go, okay, that didn't hurt, I hit them back three times just to make sure on the judges' scorecards, I won the exchange. And so that the opponent across from me goes, okay, I threw a kick, but then he came back and he hit me. Again, you're dissuading them from wanting to throw their favorite techniques, which starts putting the fight back into your court where you're controlling the pace, controlling what techniques are being thrown. Next guys, we want to make sure we're faking. We don't wanna just, we talked about not just standing square in front of them. And if we're not standing square in front of them, we don't wanna let them constantly pressure us. So we need to utilize fakes to keep them at bay, which means if I'm out here and I'm bouncing, I, I'm always throwing shots, I'm faking to try and make sure this guy is not getting comfy with just planting there, thinking he can just truck on forward. And also, I have noticed a number of times that Muay Thai fighters throw big hands. Like they're trying to take your head off when they throw them. They're more timing based and a little bit more technical with the knees, the clench, the kicks, but with the hands, a lot of times it's big bombs. So if he's standing there and I fake and then he launches a big shot at me, he thinks he's gonna counter, that will leave me an opening. I fake, I just slip back a little bit and then I move in for my counter shots. When somebody has a tendency to overreact, they overreact to small motions, you have to make sure you're faking, you're taking advantage of it, you're putting their timing off. You could fake with your feet, little pumps forward, you can fake with your hands, you can fake with your legs, any of them are fine, just get that reaction out of them and make sure you don't settle in to this timing that they like. And my final tip guys, 
for dealing with a Muay Thai fighter who comes to a kickboxing ring is attack them to the body. Not with the legs, not with the knees. They're used to that. Attack them to the body with the hands. In my experience, when I've fought guys who are Muay Thai style based, their hands are up very high and their bodies are very open. And if you hit them with a few shots early on, the more you put together combos, the higher their hands get. And you might find, okay, it's difficult to land to their head because their hands are so high. Well, that means the body's gonna be open. So I try to go one, two, and I finish each combo with a body shot or I mix in the body shot and then come back to the head. Attacking the body against a Muay Thai stylist is very, very effective. It's not gonna be effective for every Muay Thai fighter out there, but in general, in the experience that I've had, in the guys that I've competed against who are from Thailand, or who adapt to that style, who take on that style, the body shots are very, very lucrative against them. Now, guys, keep in mind that this is all about tips for a kickboxer beating a Muay Thai fighter. But if you're a Muay Thai fighter and you're about to enter the kickboxing ring, you can just take everything I've said flip it upside down and understand this is what we are going to try and utilize against you and then make the adjustments. What do you have to do to be a little bit more successful in the fight if somebody is coming at you with these tactics? When you're fighting somebody with a different style, it's all about structuring the proper game plan. When I go to China, I know I'm going to be dealing with sidekicks. Every time I go, the guys are just busting out sidekicks, body height, head height. I drill and drill and drill for it. So when you're fighting a certain style, just take the proper preparations, understand what you're facing, and you'll be that much more dominant on fight night. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, this breakdown, give it a like. If you have not already, get subscribed. I have lots of content that is coming at you almost daily right now. And of course, guys, as I always say, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.